Roger, how are things? It's been a while. Very good, Ranjan. Good to see you. Good to be talking on this gloriously sunny day. I'm here in South Wales and uh, it's uh, it's a lovely day. Brilliant. Well, um, yeah, I think during our brief chat yesterday, we said that we would look at the going direct paradigm that you set up the mind map and all of the various tentacles, including my operations that uh, sprout from that. OK, well, look, I'm going to press share screen right now um and just see if that comes up on my screen uh so are we sharing computer sound i don't think i want to do that um let's just see uh right window skype right generic monitor start sharing okay and then i'm gonna click here And you can tell me whether that's appearing or not. It's just thinking. This is on thebrain.com. Yeah. Oh, right, it's making me log in. Here we go. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put up here London. Uh, London conversation, there you are. Right, okay, so, anyway. so here's the London con conversation, here's Financial Eyes. Okay, so in, in the Going Direct Paradigm mind map, here you are in the middle with the link to the London Conversation blog. Off to the left here is Financial Eyes, the, your YouTube channel, right? And then the parent things for this, the four pamphleteers, that's you, me, David, who says uh, hi, by the way, he and I oh, brilliant. yesterday, uh, and John at the slog. Um, and here's your Twitter feed, Financial Eyes. And I've got commentators and experts. We won't go and look and see who the others are, but I've got you under there, of course. OK. And then there are links to several things here. So um, off to the right, you've got the Going Direct Paradigm, which is the uh, the central hub of this whole mind map. You've got Gollum, that's David, not the Grub Street Journal, that's me, the Slog, that's John. And then this is Ian Crane's autumn 2007 presentation on peak oil, which is very good. OK, right then. Your interview with David on Real Media when he was running to be Green Party leader. Yeah. A link to the Real Media uh, <clears throat> website, um, which we we met when you were working on that with your colleagues there. Mm. This is your interview with Richard Murphy, the um, what's it called? Um, tax blog or whatever it's called. I was banned from tax it. Re tax research, I think. That's it. Your interview with Roger Hallam from XR Rebellion. Yep. Our discussion about did billionaire Richard Desmond bribe Robert Jenrick? Yep. Your discussion with Bob Gill before the general election 2019 and his film The Great NHS Heist. Yep. Your interview with David Graeber on Syria anarchism and visited Rehoba. Yep. This is a link to other blogs. That's Ian Davis's uh, logo there. Your interview of Anne Pettifor the heterodox economist and then Ardha. So this is one of the big taboos that you and I talk about, which no one talks about Ardha. So if I click Ardha on the mind map, it'll put Ardha in the center. At the bottom here, it links to your article on Ardha from the, okay. from the web, COVID passports, digital currencies. OK, um, and then Ardha here is centered and, and where it links up to lots of different things which feed into that. This is an interesting one. Dr. Pippa Malgram at the World Government Summit in 2022 talking about blockchain and digital currencies. So that's that's the mind map. If we just um, just go back to uh, back to your good self. Uh, where are we? Um, 
easier to do it this way. London. London conversation. There we are. So back to you. That's the mind map and that kind of sets up kind of where where I'm at now. Um, and what we said we talk about. Now, just before getting into that. This is the Grub Street in Exile substack, OK? And a good starting point with that is what the top 10 posts that I've been done, been putting on there. I've been linking back to not the Grub Street Journal and I'm bringing together a kind of a timeline. I said in in the message I sent you, I'm looking at the timeline from 1995 essentially to now. Um, but as I see it, we've got the new American century beginning in 2000. So 2000 to now. So let's call it 2000 to 2025. And then we've got 2000 back to 1975. And so obviously the Nixon shock, dollar coming off oil, right? Dot com bubble, 2000, pandemic into uh, the bridge between Agenda 2020 and Agenda 2030. And all of the stuff about what I call the Panopticon jailer bot. So, my <clears throat> archive of posts is here, uh, but I can actually do those in, in terms of the top 10. Um, yeah, and, and this is the top 10. So, starting off with Kevin Galilee's talk, uh, the international system of depopulation. Uh, if, if if people haven't watched that, it's worth watching. Then my post about the Panopticon jailer bot talking about the digital gulag. Number three, carbon currency endgame unfolds as a confluence of economic myths directed by a no longer invisible hand seeks to bring in a techno feudal um, gulag or whatever. There's Bill Gates with the cartoon of him talking about useless eaters. This here is um, a letter from 2007, which Walter Burian had as a comment in an obscure monetary blog uh, entitled The Rock Thrown in the Pond. That's worth reading, very relevant to, to now. That was in the heat of the global financial um, crisis. We're all precogs now, pre-crime, determinist judges of future crime serving as a metaphor for analytic prediction. Uh, I talked to David about that briefly yesterday. Um, this is part of a quote from Proudhon, a <clears> registered, <throat> counted, tax stamped, measured, numbered, assessed, licensed, authorised, admonished, prevented, forbidden, reformed, central bank digital currencies, which promised to do all those things. And the slide there, event 201 with hindsight, was it a monetary event? Have we gone direct? Central bank digital currencies. Right. They, them, us out of this world, superlative or supernatural. Now that that's an interesting one, and it refers to the Tucker Carlson Putin interview, uh, which has been making big head headlines. And then also David Icke appeared on um, Alex Jones uh, last Friday. And oh, really? then they did a Twitter spaces and Elon Musk pretending to someone else be someone else appeared um, and <laughs> it, it's button. very entertaining to watch and listen to it's very weird it's a real sort of head fuck I but, think uh, I, I, I can't approve of Musk in particular can he uh, well no of course but, but what's interesting is he and Alex Jones have this conversation for the first hour where Alex Jones is saying, oh, well, you've been calling me out for supporting Tucker and all the rest of it. I'm not controlled opposition, David. Um, I, and and I, I just wanted to talk to you because we're friends. You know, I love you, all this sort of thing. And David Icke sort of said, well, whether you're doing it on purpose or not, Tucker Carlson is one of the establishment. You know, um, it's, it, it's kind of absurd that he's painted as some sort of Re, you know, newfound rebel without a cause or whatever, um, which is a, a reasonable point to make. Um, I'm with David Icke on that. Yeah, quite. And, 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 and you know, to go with uh, what Putin was saying to Tucker Carlson, you know, don't ask me, go and ask them. They're still around. So 
And the funny thing about that is David I was asked by Alex Jones in the first hour, what would you say to Elon Musk if he was on here? What would you say? And what David said was, um, oh, right, OK, the employees of Twitter that were suing for uh, compensation, OK, big court case in America about this, um, and in discovery, they wanted to know who the shareholders were of X Holdings Corporation, which is what owns all the X companies, including yeah. X, formerly Twitter, right? 90 shareholders, every single one of which was redacted in the legal documents, right? Including no Elon Musk. <laughs> so, but he didn't ask this guy, Richard, pretending not to be Elon Musk about that, even though... They, um, and then they talked about interdimensional. So, hold, on, hold on. David Icke mentioned that there are 90 unnamed yeah. owners. He did mention that. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the first hour. And then Elon Musk pretended to be someone else came on and he didn't ask him. It, it was bizarre. It, it was truly bizarre. Um, I thought David handled it pretty well. But uh, the discussion with Musk was mainly about AI and about AI being used as a means to transfer human consciousness off planet in the event that the sun burns up the earth in a million years time, which is kind of a, you know, I mean, fun it's transhumanism, isn't it? It's transhumanism. Yeah, precisely. And this, uh, the, so the interesting thing about all <clears throat> of that is, is it served as a distraction from, well, hey, Elon, you know, here you are, the second richest, richest man in the world, does it really matter? Um, effectively, you run the British, uh, the British Leyland of the 21st century, which is Tesla. Um, we, we joked about that years ago. Um, here you are with all your rockets, your NASA contracts. You know, you're, you're basically the deep states boy and, and you're supposed to be some sort of rebel. Is that your um, point? You know, when you say when you say the British Leyland, is that your way of saying the deep states boy? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Government back? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, Tesla picking, picking uh, winners. You know, Musk's operation is effectively a nationalised industry, just with mm. all the profit okay. going into private okay. off balance sheet into people's back pockets. Okay, yeah, um, just checking. You know, that's that's the way that the corporate state, court, you know, state monopoly capitalism. That's the way it extracts. Okay, you know, the Commonwealth into private hands. You know, the elite, call them what you will. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that's the same in China, right? I mean, I guess that's how it works. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And Russia, you know, it's it's that, that's how it's done. So. Um, so. So anyway, this they them us and that blog is quite interesting. And the other bit is this off world stuff, because I don't think you need to even go there. Um, and Francis leader put a link to this. It's a something called the Deep State Mapping Project. And this guy's done a deep state map um, showing all of the uh, the hierarchy of world political economy, socio-political economy, call it what you will. At the very top is uh, emperors, kings, Pindar, queen and antichrist. Now, what the fuck is Pindar? I, I know Pindar, the, the, uh, the, you know, the Greek or Roman poet, lyric poet but it's not him it's pindar as a kingly title as an overlord type title the guy that made the video says oh pindar in some cultures is the title of some sort of emperor or whatever i'm just not quite sure what it is i mean i know what the antichrist is but pindar um i don't know but there are these five things at the top and then down from there, it's got all the esoteric secret societies, then the think tanks and, you know, all the rest of it. I mean, do you want to have a look at it? I mean, it's quite. quite yeah, I mean, you know, on, on Pindar, it's weird because it kind of it sounds like Pixar in in Hindu culture. We have the Pandavas, which obviously has nothing to do with this. I wouldn't have thought. But that's in the um, Mahabharata. They are the five brothers who have their crown an empire taken away from them by their uncle who rigs the dice and so the family goes to their half brother i'm sure you know the story and they had the blind king and it goes to the half brother no, i'm not the cousins this I, is the bhagavad gita correspond with the professor of um oh what's it, the i can't even pronounce it the bhagavita 
Yeah, that's it. That's what this is. This is the Bhagavad Gita yeah. for me, the part of it. But... I, I, I'm not, you know, I, 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 I'm no scholar of, of like yourself. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, you don't have to be a scholar. I'm talking about, it's it's another story, basically. It's mm-hmm. another one of, like, the stories. Yeah, well, they're stories of supporting hierarchies and caste systems and stuff like that. You know, what's a hierarchy? It's a sort of a caste system, isn't it? So, um you know, can I can I yeah, can I just say when you were talking about um Ike and Musk, um so Musk coming in and owning X, which is a big town square kind of deal. Yeah, or or does he? Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> so whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that's being represented that owns this thing now, um it is interesting in that if Musk, that's it. It was the transhumanist thing that you kind of mentioned. So if Musk is basically just a big fat transhumanist and he's there saying, I have got all of the anti-vax crew in my pocket because they love me. Um, Actually, that means that he's playing everyone because he's a transhumanist and he's got everyone who's against transhumanism on his side um, because they don't get it. That's how it sounds to me. And so, therefore, he's playing games by confusing everyone in the same way that, what's his name, Curtis, Adam Curtis talks about Vladimir Surkov, just playing everyone against each other in order to distract them from the bigger game, which is, you know, we own everything. Yeah. That's what I take from what you've told me, which I did not know. This is that map, okay. So in terms of, uh, that's the top half of it. This is the off-world stuff. OK, so this is the because God or because simulation, because, you know, because supernatural underneath here, you've got Emperor, King, Pindar, Queen, Antichrist. And um, so actually, th- these are the off world entities. So this is David Icke's lizards. Where are the lizards? I'm not sure. Um, they're the Dracos, aren't they? The lid- lizards. Uh, anyway. Um, so it, oh, there we are. This is this is where I'll get a bigger one of it. I think if I open that, hopefully the uh, like my comment on all of this is because simulation, because off world control. I mean, with a question mark, that's my thing. You know, people say because climate change, because God, you know, because controlled opposition. Then they're, they're not arguments. Um, yeah, I quite like because the Internet. I quite like that one. <laughs> So anyway, oh no, this is their, this is the video. Um, I don't want the video, I want the actual map. But what is the point of this? The, the point of this is... is I mean, that, of, us, of, of us looking at this. Yeah, the point of us looking at this is, is that what I think we should be talking about is everything below what we know about the top of the, pari- the, 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 the uh, pyramid. We know that kings, emperors, queens exist. I don't know what Pindar is. Antichrist is speculative, in my opinion. Um, so and if I scroll down further here, um, I need to, I'm sure I had a link. That, no, that's the interview. I've got a bigger one of the bottom half somewhere. Um, hold on, I, I'll, I will be able to open it. Just bear with me slightly. My computer so sort of, these are, my m and is um, causes of inconsistencies and contradictions. Uh, but even if we don't look at this, Roger, what is, what is the, well, what's my being point discussed is here? This, what, what are you okay, saying? It is that the Ike and Jones interview started off talking about reality, provable reality, empirical reality, right? Yeah. By going off world with the discussion, both Musk did that. Um, and Alex Jones was saying, oh, uh, even Tucker Carlson is now on board with the off worldness control side of things, right? My point is actually, it's a lot simpler than that. The hierarchy we know about, even the occulted parts of the hierarchy, so that's the secret societies and whatnot, right? But the 
even if you start at the analysis of Michael Hudson and his um, OGAM, oil, gas, uh, manufacturing, uh, military industrial complex, um, finance, insurance, real estate. Uh, so if, if you look at the oligarchy or you look at the power structure, the oligarchy is above the overt governmental type of stuff. Well, th this this deep state mapping thing maps all of that under this off world stuff. By concentrating on the off world stuff, it's speculative and it distracts from actually a key moment where people are seeing the system of political economy across the world laid bare. It's obvious at the moment that the economy is stagnant, our political leaders are impotent, okay, and we can look at what that structure is. We can look at what that structure is and how we're told it works and we can see actually how it must work from the fruits of its machinations. Yeah, but we can do that without thinking about Pindar. Uh, well, it, it's I mean, a, we, I mean, like I get, my, I get. My point I, is this: is that the discourse at the moment is being distracted from very real and obvious failings in the system. What is the system that is failing? Why is it failing? And off-world because simulation, because esoteric stuff is not needed. It's a distraction, and yet so much effort goes in that direction. Okay, so what? Yeah, okay, okay. So basically, in a way, for example, uh, Musk and whoever else owns X, um, Ike mentioned that the ownership of X is something that he would raise when Jones asked him, What would you say to Musk? Um, there's the mention by Putin himself, apparently. I haven't watched all the interview at all, I just watched the beginning. Uh, but there's the mention apparently by Putin is where he says Musk will do what Musk will do. Um, apparently he's been putting things, doing stuff with brains. Uh -huh. And then this whole thing of like dreaming of the afterworld and, and living forever and all this transhumanist and like space exploration type stuff that gets mentioned. And I think your point is that stuff is mentioned and it's kind of a fucking waste of it's a sort of distraction from yeah. the real stuff, which is. Some people are being murdered and other people uh, can't get enough time with their family uh, or, you know, like heating, etc. That's right. I've stopped sharing my screen now. So here I yeah. am. Um, I, I wanted to just do that. As a sort of a framework. Yeah, because the framework I want to get to is the video that you did about who owns Joe politics, Novara Media, uh, he who pays the piper calls the tune, is, could be a subtitle for that, right? Um, which is very important, and it applies equally well to Alex Jones, David Icke, Elon Musk, Twitter. Uh, but th what I call the Panopticon Jailer Bot is the um, cloud server-based distribution center distribution system for information which is regulated um, in, in, in terms of the, the flow of information, not, not, not the censorship or regulation of it, but regulated um, in terms of flow at the server cloud level and to that extent digital media is uh, no longer impartial in any way, shape or form. OK, Import, impartial stuff exists on it, but it doesn't join together and you have to be sp specifically looking for stuff that is buried within it. By definition, everything is buried because there's just such a huge amount of information. But the Internet is supposed to be good at finding needles in haystacks. But the way that search engines work in terms of sorting through stuff, it's very easy to game that. Now, um, Julian Assange showed us that, Aaron Schwartz showed us that. Um, so you're talking about the distribution 
of meaningful Snowden showed us that and Zach you, well he's showed yeah you, that you're talking things. Roger you're talking about the distribution of actually meaningful information and high quality information that well, is I mean obviously you can have a philosophical question of what's relevant I mean on the extreme you have total randomness and then you have stuff that means something to someone uh, and then you have the role of curation and spoon feeding curation, and gatekeeping librarianship etc. yeah and you also and you also talk about linguistics in that if you have this whole notion of unstructured information then the whole bit where you do the structuring that's kind of like goes back to your metaphor of putting your thumb on the scale as well yeah. right um the thumb is definitely on the scale it's a very good metaphor miller's tale chaucer of course so effectively okay um you have language models and you have behavior models right obviously you have numerical statistical probabilistic models as well but if you take two he headings language models and behavior models um and those are then giving inputs to the predictive pre-crime, precognition, deterministic ambitions of the establishment, the, you know, th those who would be gods, you know, the, you know, the bosses, right? Now, um, the internet is an absolute dream if you have a deterministic, uh, dictatorial, authoritarian bent, as it were, right? Um, and the way to beat it is with pen and penny, pen and paper, and pencil and paper, and um, Distrib distribu distribution through leaflets, an analog solution to a digital problem. That's effectively what I'm saying. Mm. And when one boils down what's happened in the last five years, and the last 25 years, okay. The digital realm has placed us in a mind prison, a digital gulag. Uh, it's, it, it, it's put blinkers on rather than taken blinkers off. That's, that's my- Yeah, and, and, and when you refer to, for example, pamphlets and analog, um yeah so okay um for us to be able to communicate with each other in a way that can be trusted in some way we ought to be able to get messages to each other that can't be hidden or mediated you know you know hidden or or kind of diluted um okay like is that what you mean or censored is that what you mean we need to actually listen to each other instead of we do but for things to change people have to listen to each other at scale and act in unison or act together united oh, we I see. Stand, divided uh, we fall blah, yeah blah, blah. and it would be nice if we could do that on the internet or well, the internet could be a tool to do that but it isn't it'd be nice it's, if it could help but yeah um and 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 it you know, it and when you say it isn't, smart, you're saying that when, when you say it isn't, you're saying that from the perspective of someone who has been involved in different collective efforts over the years um, and seen them sort of rise and fall. Right. And, yeah. and and you've communicated with other people that have been involved in that sort of thing. And it's it, it's from that that you speak, I believe. Yeah, because is that right? We, we don't have an Occupy today. One, because the nature of the internet has changed since Occupy, right? Um, and part of the reason that Occupy doesn't exist today is because of the ability of groups of people who agree with each other to actually know. So an, a, 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 
a really good point about this is the gaslighting that went on with the victims of the Horizon scandal. Every single one of those victims were told, you're the only one that's having yeah. this problem. Yeah. And it's it, it's a study in how they were kept apart by gaslighting. But that's, but that's preoccupied. <laughs> no, what, what I'm saying is that Occupy, okay, happened before the internet internet got degraded to the stage it has now. Yeah. The degradation of the internet really got going in 2014, 2015, and then in 2016, after Brexit, after Trump, right? You know, it's interesting yeah. that Tucker that's, that's was, was when we met, isn't it? for but... calling out election rigging. Sorry? And Tucker was sacked for calling out election rigging. Murdoch sacked his boy when, uh, uh, you know, um, the, uh, Dominion. The, the, the Dominion got a judgment against him for 800 million quid, for God's sake, or 800 million dollars. So these are all parts of the same same bit, but the the Internet is regulated in terms of flows of information at the server based cloud level. It's a very important point. Right. What's the antidote to that? The antidote to that is these things. This is a USB drive. Uh, so on this USB drive, I, I've got the Grub Street Journal as it was when it was on a paid thing. I've, I've now got the old part of it up. I, I, I have access to all the stuff. I mean, I've got several of these things and I've got it on some hard drives as well. Right now. Okay. End-to-end -end encryption, which is as old as the hills, um, not the hills, obviously, but as old as the internet anyway, um, and hash keys, dongles, right? Um, if you encrypt what's going out and you're communicating with other people, you can still do that at scale, right? Um, but the server-based cloud doesn't do that. It's still it's a form of distributed computing, but still with regulate with regulation in terms of flows of information. So wh when I started coding the Grub Street Journal on the uh, Open Internet Protocol, okay, um, the reason Devon kind of went off the idea was that I said the token that you plan on using, um, you're, you're making the platform about the token and trying to make money from the token rather than being agnostic and having end-to-end -end encryption as, as a thing, right? Now, Julian Assange talks about all of this and not, via WikiLeaks, you can actually get uh, encryption for these things to make private networks which aren't actually subject to the snooping of the NSA, right? All that stuff's out there. I've known about it for years, right? Um, we've got to the point where everyone is so reliant on the goldfish bowl that is the, 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 the modern legacy internet, right? Um, that no one trusts the internet anywhere more. No one trusts each other anymore, right? In analog, Right. Analog is the answer to digital problems. Like, so you know, I was you, into what would you um, what would you what would modeling you, and stuff. What would you like to see happening then? Because obviously it's been good to have this chat. Um, but let's say anyone apart from me is enjoying this chat and has got this far. Then what? Where are you at at the moment? Uh, where I'm at is I'm just trying to figure out how how to navigate the wall of stagnation that is the economy at the moment. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. You know, I, I want to earn a living and have a decent and enjoyable sure, life. With sure, my sure, 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 sure. But what, what sorry, what I meant was um, if someone's listening to this, uh, they will already have had quite a few things to think about um from so far what we've been talking about but what would be the kind of takeaways they'll take what they want away but if they were to ask you what the takeaways were 
uh, what kinds of things would you, along what sorts of lines would you want them to be thinking? Well, right. Make the internet something that you do to it rather than let it be something that is done to you. That, in a nutshell, is what I'm saying. And the best way not to have to lock horns with the internet is to go analog. OK, so talk to each other, you know, go meet people and, um, you know, organize, organize yeah. towards the local ends that you want to achieve. Okay. It's just basic good old fashioned localism. Brilliant. And don't expect the internet to save anything. It's a non sentient uh, information sharing. Not that there's much sharing going on of any meaningful level at the moment, but it's basically just a file sharing thing. And so, um, in human relations if a, 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 an idea shared isn't an idea halved okay it, it it expands the internet okay will keeps halving ideas halving ideas it's not expanding opportunity it's monopolized the 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 revenue streams available from the internet are hugely hugely condensed at the very top now it's the same in cryptocurrencies as well. I mean, Elon Musk is also a, a, a Bitcoin whale and a cryptocurrency whale. Um, yeah. So is Craig right? BS. Okay, okay, but, but 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 so so what you're saying is, um, meet people, have a life offline, uh, but when you are online, let being online not just be somewhere where you pick up a bit of information here and there, but actually do something online if you yeah, are be, 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 basically. Online, use it as a tool. You know that the 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 oldest saying in the book is it, it, it if if it's free, you're the product. Yeah. Right now, you can't use Google and turn off cookies. It doesn't work if you turn off their cookies. Right. Um, getting away from Google, getting away from Twitter is, you know, getting away from Facebook. Right. It's really hard to do. There's a lot of inertia in that. OK, but the starting point is to to go on analog and, and get some local network stuff going. And to do that, you can do it in mail groups encrypted. OK, using one of these things as your dongle. OK, and build you, you build from the bottom up. Well, what so does it mean to have a what, what does it what does it mean to have an encrypted mail group? What, what does that mean as opposed to like a WhatsApp group? What's the difference? Well, what it our, our use of the internet now and us doing this now. I mean, I'm looking at the captions coming up on on um, on okay. Skype, right? Yeah. This whole conversation is analysed for behavioural um, analytics. OK, you know, they don't know it's you and me and they don't care, but it, the, the language model will give sing signals, the behavioural model will give signals and that will go into a high level. Right. You know, of the umpteen million conversations going on in Skype at the moment, this is what's trending. This is what's working. You know, we need to change the information flow in such a way so people don't have these um the, the 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 these these thought crime conversations you know it's that's basically what it is so um mm. and so what we're doing is we're training the ai we're training the panopticon jailer bot right we're training to up, it to pick up to, on to, us to be a more discreet yet more tyrannical jailer in the digital yeah. book gulag and we we kind of need to stop doing that so in the past i've mentioned cultstate.com uh and the guy that writes that blog he he wrote an article called um gnostic wars and the butterfly um wars 
which which I put on a blog the other day. So that list of blogs that I showed, I, I, I mean, I've, I've summarised this stuff as much as I can. And mm. you know, when when I was doing Grub Street Journal, I went right into that rabbit hole. Right. Um, that was five years ago now. I mean, I, I um, and things haven't really moved on much oh, since yeah. then. Um, but I've I've spent four years in the real economy in in the physical analog economy trying to build houses it's not possible you know if it were possible i would have built some by now and i haven't it's amazing um, how much they talk about it in the you know in the um you know like gove and all of this stuff they talk no, about but the, 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 I, I, they've been having the same conversation for 25 years yeah it goes around in a big circle you know and and, and you know it's the, the internet as goldfish bowl all the people swimming around have got the same memory capabilities of, of a goldfish bowl, bowl precisely because that's how the regulation of the new cycle works right and it's it, it, it's not helpful if you want to uh, have things arranged in a more effective way you know i i don't you and i are talking now i'm not an intimate dimensional Thing. you're you know, yeah, know you're a person other, yeah, we've, we've, met a re- we've met in together. the real we've world as well haven't we match together you know i mean yeah yeah we know each other we met yeah. on the internet but we formed a, a, a friendship the same with david you know um uh and that's and lots of people are doing that what's important is to realize we're not the only ones far from it right but um people who want to manipulate uh, manipulate and monopolize communication for both financial and political ends um don't want this sort of discourse to be seen you know in, in, in you know the gaslighting of the that's the gaslighting point about the uh about the horizon victims in the post office scandal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger, I think I'm going to head off soon. Um, so, is there anything else that you want to say? No, no. That I mean, I, I I just wanted to have a chat of where, where we're up to. We did another chat in t- September 2023, which is on financial eyes, and I watched that the other day, and and uh, we had a good chat, and I started thinking about that all this stuff then. I, I, I've I've spent the last five days trying to get my yeah. own thinking together. I mean, I'm not telling anyone what to do. I, I mean, I, I'm as clueless as the next person. I'm just sort of, um, I, I put a quote up from a poem uh, early. I'm just going to share my screen again and just, uh, if we can just finish with this. Um, so I reviewed a poetry book um, a while back. Unt, uh, let's have a look. Um, uh, if you can just bear with me when it comes up, because my link is a bit slow. Um, just see what we've got here. It's funny that you said, look, look at this. It's funny how you've got Craig right there, because his... He was in the news the other day, wasn't he? Yeah, Yeah, he's, I mean, even in today's City AM, I think one of the things that's quite interesting is that um, yesterday was the Super Bowl, in which the amazing um, Taylor Swift apparently uh, kisses a Pfizer spokesman, who's the main guy for America. Yes. Well, yeah. and, and everyone says, oh, wow, what are the set of coincidences? Um, but anyway, the um, and apparently there's a there's an advert for um, recovering hostages in Gaza or something like that, you know, like an Israeli government mm-hmm. advert. So all of that stuff is happening. but. Um, in the crowd, there's a photograph next to Jay Z was Jack Dorsey. Really? And yeah, and nice. he's wearing a T-shirt that looks like the old Nirvana T-shirt, which I think has a happy face and has Nirvana in yellow. Mm. And in the same font, it says Satoshi. Ah. And, <laughs> so that's Jack Dorsey wearing a Satoshi T-shirt. And so the thing is that he is taking Craig Wright to court. Now, I don't really know the yeah. outs of it, 
but he appears to be saying I need it to be legally written down that you are right, not look, here's one it's for so you. important for him Lynn Hersel is a professor of Far Eastern philosophy I think it's in South Korea he's based okay. All right. he was interviewed by Steve Keen about two three years ago well, anyway, he was one of the original people in the discussion on the P2P Foundation website when Satoshi launched the white paper. OK. Right. Uh -huh. And Herschel, you know, he could be Satoshi. He's certainly part of that initial group. Right. And so Satoshi, I don't believe as an individual, even Craig Wright, he worked with someone else. There was litigation over that as well. Right. But. There's no doubt the NSA owned the SHA-253 algorithm, right? Or SH2, blah, blah, blah. That, that's kind of just, just cork sniffy stuff. But like, <laughs> um, I linked the other day to an article that appeared in uh, an obscure geopolitical magazine where Kapersky, Kapersky is kind of like the Russian um, McAfee. Uh, McAfee right saying that bitcoin is a cia operation i think he's absolutely right and, and this article is about why china is outlawing the use of bitcoin and all the rest of it it's the same scene that went down um about our government's getting really upset about zoom and also uh booting out all the hawaii comms equipment because you know they want the back doors for themselves that's essentially it. Yeah. But anyway, ju just to close, I mean, all that stuff is in I, this last week. I've been quite busy and, and the Grub Street in Exile has got a basically it's a condensed version of all my work since 2011. OK, and this is today. And, and, and dips back into ni 1995 and in literature, it dips right back actually into ancient Egypt and kind of film texts and all that shit. Right? OK. But anyway, this, it, this, this is a quote? line. This is a stanza from a poet, poem by a poet called Kwame Ansa Jr. OK, I reviewed his book of poetry. Um, I think it was back in 2016. I blogged about it in 2019, October 2019. But anyway, here's a stanza. I'm sick of surviving and living like this. An at will employee, just another nobody in the system. An at will employee, employee, just another supposed victim. Well, you know, I, that kind of sums it up. You know, um, yeah, let's, I, I, I went, I went. let's stop the Internet doing this to us. Let's stop training the Panopticon jailer bot. Let's, you know, let, 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 let's create a better Internet in the image of the people. Can I, can I just just chuck another thing? There's someone was mentioned at a talk that I went to. So I went to a talk at the ICA and it was about the last movies that people watched before they died. Someone's written a book about it and has a series of um, talks happening. And um, one of the things that happened during the discussion, I think it was on the 22nd of November. So it was the 60th anniversary of JFK. And apparently JFK, one of the last films he saw was from Russia with Love. He was a big uh, James Bond fan. Um, and funnily enough, my dear friend Helena's second husband, Rifat, is actually in that film from Rashford with Love. Um, but anyway, um, so there's, there's all, all these coincidences. But one of the things they said about COVID and the pandemic, I don't know if it was an Italian philosopher, he basically said this. We decided that survival itself was so important that we were prepared to give everything up in favor of that. But actually, maybe that's not a good decision. Because, you know, maybe there's things that are worth living for, you know, more than just life, if you see what I mean. You know, if you give everything up just to survive, it means that that's the philosophy that allows the government to take all your rights away. And say, so, well, we've got to do it to protect life. And then after they don't let you, they don't let you live. It, it's it's bogus, isn't it? You know, life is life is for living not for fearing i mean i it, it there, there are a million and one cliches we can go but it's you know freedom liberty life liberty pursuit of happiness yep that's it. it's in the american constitution we don't we you know there's nothing really more evolved than than that 
yeah, and free, freedom of, of, of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association. Yeah, I think putting putting people on hold is, you know, when when you just do it forever, it's bad. I mean, for example, an example, of course, is Julia Assange at the moment. Um, someone I, I know who is effectively a military spokesperson and embedded journalist, um, I asked... Um, very off the record, you know, what do you think about the implications for uh, media in general with regard to an extradition of Julian Assange? And I was pretty much told, no, it's terrible because there's no habeas corpus. He's just been in jail for all of this time. Um, but no one will talk about it because they're all too right wing. Um, and that that was the answer I was given. But I mean, that doesn't the last bit doesn't mean anything uh. to me, to me. But the first bit does, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the it's it doesn't. So but this whole thing where you can just go, oh, yeah, we're just waiting around. Mm. We're waiting around. We're waiting around. This is this is regarded as a way of, of, of treating people in plain sight. Yeah. You know. People should read Julian's book when WikiLeaks met Google. It's a really good book. And, and the actual surviving interview of, of, of the meeting that took place between Eric Schmidt and Julian and some other guy mm. is very informative, very instructive. Um, yeah, because, you know, when you say digital gulag... I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? We kind of imprison ourselves by submitting ourselves to all of this. But, you know, people that call it out, you know, there's trouble there. Yeah, but, um, mate, you're my friend. I enjoy talking to you. I, I don't do this to make money, to change minds or anything. It, it, for me, it, it's a notebook. If, if anyone gets anything from it, well, you know, good for them. Um, I, I'd rather be sat down down in Paddington, down the pub, with a nice <laughs> pint of Guinness, and a pint right. of bags, yeah, exactly. and, and, and and watch the world go by. And you know, when 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 the weather gets a bit better, hopefully we have the chance to do more of that. But you know, um, that's that's the life worth living. You know, the whatever it is, the uh, the joie de vivre, the 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 vivre, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all all of these wonderful sort of Mediterranean, um, you know. Uh, things i mean they're very welsh as well but you know it's very human isn't it um yeah, hanging out yeah yeah let it all hang out that's what we want <laughs> all right well i shall i shall let you go for now um let's catch up soon all right mate Cheers good chatting bye bye